to so what this short of all this is you take path you take image of the path in the z plane you choose various points here you take various points there the image and then i talk about z plane z Etc. Now between Z0 and Z0, I choose one point. Z0 and Z2, I choose one point. Then I choose various points there. Uh, so this, I want to find the integral of that function upon this path. So this is the sum uh, f of zeta n into delta z n. All those various points you choose, you can consider the value of those points and multiply it by the length of the integral. Take this point anywhere in between. Value of f at that point and take the length of the integral. So you keep doing this. Take the sum and so this is the sum which we are talking about. Uh, is, as I said, this is a typo. This is not delta Z M. This is Z N minus. Sorry about that. So this is the sum which we are considering. So this sum you do it for different parts. That tm minus tm minus one tends to zero. That means the two points which you chose next to each other on the line segment must become closer and closer. So limit question of tilde. After all, integration you have to define it using some limit. So I do this process. I get uh, that means tm and tm minus one are very close. Delta z is also tending to zero. Uh, so this sum I get this sum for different partitions. So limit of the sequence of complex numbers S2, S3. S2 means you partition into two parts. Partition the line segment into two parts. S3 means you partition the same line. S4 means partition the same line into four parts. You partition into four parts, take a point in each of the interval, find its value here, and find the value of the function which you want to integrate at the image of these points and multiply it by the interval. That is what we have done here. Uh, I know it's a bit, you know, it's like a big wall, but you have to go through this. So this limit of the sequence of these numbers is defined to be the line integral of offset over the oriented curve C. Oriented here because, uh, again, here I'll not spend too much time on this. Oriented means it starts somewhere and ends somewhere, and you always go in one particular direction. That's all you will understand by orientation. Right now, for this course, that much is so this limit of the sequence of complex numbers is defined to be line integral and the c the function c or the image of c in complex plane is called the path of the integration and the important thing in mathematics is this limit exists and it is unique uh, one can prove this but it is not part of this course so i won't bother about it perhaps if definition is not very really, see i'll try to explain this definition what it is saying is i have z plane and i have a function defined on this z plane here i take a path integration of this function along this path is nothing but i want to take the value of the function at every point of the path and add them all up. that's what integration means that's what we are trying to do here but adding up means adding up infinitely many points how do i do that i cannot do it algebraically so i take help of calculus in terms of limits and I have given you the definition. So integration means basically take the value of the function at every point and add them all up in some sense. So that is what uh, integration means and this that is what line integral means. So integral is denoted always by integral of f of z dz over this line complex length, uh, over this contour, over this path c. 
this is the notation. What you see on your screen is the notation for integral of f over this path. And sometimes path may be closed. That means maybe like a loop. That means the initial point A and final point may be B. Maybe like a loop. In this case, the same integral is denoted with a um, circle here. It's called it's denoted right now it's denoted like this let's not give a separate name for this uh, so either you denote integrals like this when the path is not closed and this is the notation when path is closed and what i want you to see is you see f of z as i said f of z is a complex function so for every value of z f of z is going to be a complex number that means it will have a real part and a complex part so f of z is u plus ib and dz, dz means change in z. Change in z is like dx plus i dy. This is the standard thing which you must have done in your first module also when you derived your Cauchy Raman equations. So dz is dx plus i dy. Now, you see, I can rewrite this u plus i d into dx plus i dy. I'll try to separate out real and complex part. So real part is clearly u dx plus plus a lot minus my iv into i dy that is minus v dy i square is minus one and complex part will be u u dy plus v dx okay I return it v dx plus v dy that's okay first you multiply this and then you multiply this. So i is out. So what I'm trying to tell you here is, even though it's complex integration, you see u is a real function. It's a function of two variables x and y, and so values are real numbers. Similarly, v is also a real function with two variables. So u dx minus v dy is just an integral of real function. Once it is put to dx and dy. They are also same thing. So this complex integral, integral is broken up into two real integrals. Both. So if I if I know how to evaluate this, then I know how to evaluate this. So this is all definition. Uh, now I will show you by an example how to evaluate. That's much easier, simpler than um, you know. At first go, you may not have understood the definition. Don't bother too much. Try doing it, solving a problem or two, you will understand the examples. So let us evaluate this function z squared. But as I said right in the beginning, in complex number function theory, you don't integrate a function. To integrate a function, you have to integrate along the path. Along the path. So till you give me the c, this doesn't make sense. Integral of z squared dz doesn't make sense. You have to tell me along which path. So I, I, I'm, telling, I'm telling you the path. C is a straight line from z equal to zero to z equal to 1 plus 2i. So uh, you can see complex plane I hope and in the complex plane we have the function z square we have seen all these things before and now I have a straight line from 0 to 1 plus 2i. Uh, I want to know what is the integral of this function on this path. Similarly I, this is part 2 this is first question. Second question is I want to integrate the same function along a different path. What is the path here? There are two line segments, one from 0 to 1 and another from 1 to 1 plus 2. Right? That means this is on x axis and this is on not y axis but line parallel to y axis. So in the first case, I am integrating along a straight line passing through origin from 0 to 1 plus 2i. Here I am integrating along two paths, one from 0 to 1 another from 1 to 1 plus 2i. I want to know if they are different or not. So let us see how to go about it. So firstly f of z is z squared. So I'll write it, I told you, I'm going to use this. This is my uh, mantra for evaluating this integral. So I'll try to convert this to real integrals. So basically that means I have to find what is the real, u is the real part and v is the complex part of f is equal to u plus i v. That's what I told you in the beginning itself. That has been our uh, notations also. Uh, so I want to find out real and complex part of this function. So you use Cartesian coordinates. 
z square is x plus i y square, so which is x square minus y square plus i times 2x square, and dz is dx plus i dy. Standard rule. I'll substitute all this in this expression. So integral of z square dz is nothing but x plus i whole square. dz is dx plus i dy. So you rearrange all this so that you get only integrals. Um, you separate out real and complex part. So this is x square minus y square plus i times 2xy dx plus i dy. This is nothing but x square minus y square all on the path C. In this problem, we have been given two different paths. We will do on both the paths. First, I am just trying to simplify the function. I am trying to find what evaluation I have to do. I have to carry out. So this is x square minus y. So I'll write down in terms of dx, the uh, real part and imaginary part. Real part is x square minus y square dx that I have written here. And the another part I'll get from this i square is minus one, so it will be minus two xy dy. When I multiply this with this, I get this part. And for the complex part, x square minus y square into dx. No, sorry, 2xy into dx. That is what we written here. And the other complex part is x square minus y square into i dy. That is what I get here. X square minus y square dy. I is taken out here. So this integral, integral z square dz, is basically broken up into two real integrals. One is integral along the it's same path. X square minus y square dx minus 2xy dy plus i times integral of 2xy dx plus x square minus y square dy along the same path. Now comes the distinction of the path. Now in the first case, the path is uh, from 0 to 1 plus 2i, correct? 0 to 1 plus 2i straight line path means it is a straight line y equal to 2s. If you are on the path from 0 to 1 plus 2i in a straight line, that means how does various Complex numbers in that path look like they look like x plus 2x because you know, y equal to 2x is what I want. Means that's a straight line. Y equal to 2x is a straight line which contains both 0, 0 and 1 plus 2i, which means 1, 2 in polar in uh, importance. So y equal to 2x is a straight line. Uh, as x varies from 0 to 1, dy. So I have y equal to 2x, so dy equals to 2dx. So all this I have to substitute in this expression. So if I do that, this is what I get. Integral x is varying from 0 to 1. So no, z is varying from 0 to 1 plus 2i, x is varying from 0 to 1. And y varies from 0 to 2x, means not 0 to 2x, y varies y is equal to 2x. So when x is varying from 0 to 1, y will vary from 0 to 2. So when x is varying from 0, so I substitute all these things, y equal to 2x. So I had x square minus y square, instead of y I return 2x. And 2xy, 2xy, instead of y I return 2x. And instead of dy I return 2dx. Plus i times, here again, 2xy is what I had. Try to see the expression, recall the expression square minus y square. In this y, I'll write 2x. And this, anywhere there is y, I'll write 2x. Anywhere there is dy, I'll write 2dx. That's what I have done here. And this is what I get. I hope I have done it correctly. If I have not done correctly, please correct this. All you have to do is try to understand. All I have to do is replace y by 2x and dy by 2dx. And the limits are from x equal to 0 to 1. So evaluate the previous integral, it's the evaluation of usual real integral. So it seems like answer is minus 11 plus 2i by 3. Only dx is there, there's no dy. So it's actually a simple you know, integral with only one uh, independent one. For the second case, that is second case is when I want uh, the uh, integral, the path along which I want to integrate is to be made up of two line segments, one from 0 to 1, another from 1 to 1 plus 2i. 0 to 1 means, remember, y has not changed here. x is changing from 0 to 1. x is changing from 0 to 1 
and y is not changing. So dy is 0 and x is varying from 0 to 1 and y is actually equal to 0. When z is varying from 0 to 1, y is actually 0. So you have to substitute all this in this. You have to substitute y equal to 0, dy equal to 0 in this integral. And x is varying from 0 to 1. So you do that, this is what you get. So this is what I explained here. In the second case, path consists of two straight lines, one C1, C2. C1 is along x-axis from x equal to 0 to 1. And C2 is the line parallel to y-axis from 1, 0 to 1. That's the second part of the contour of the path on which I am integrating. So integral of z square over this path C is integral of z square over C1 plus integral of z square over C2. What are C1 and C2? I explained here. C1 is the first line segment from 0 to 1 on x-axis and C2 is the straight line from 1 comma 0 to 1 comma 2. Uh, so finally I ended from 0 to 1 comma 2 which is same as in complex number 0, 0. From complex number 0 I ended up at 1 plus 2. So let us integrate 1 at a time. To evaluate the first integral, this is what I was telling, one puts y equal to 0 because first part means uh, c1 is along x-axis. Along x-axis means y is 0. So y function itself is 0 and dy is also 0 because variation in y is not there at all. This means, so I substitute y equal to 0 and dy equal to 0 and x is varying from 0 to 1. So I put all these limits here. That square I know, that square minus y square dx minus 2xy dy. So this plus i times 2xy dx plus x square minus y square dy. This is what I derived just from the raw definition of z square. And here I am substituting the limits which I want for this case. That is x is varying from 0 to 1, y is 0 and d y is also 0. So these terms go away. This term is 0, this term is 0 and since y is 0, this is also 0 and this is also 0. So it's only a purely real number. Integrate x square dx between 0 and 1. I have nothing but 1 by 2. So the first integral on the first part, on the first part of the path, the integral is 1 by 3. Similarly for second integral. Second integral, see what happens. X is 1, fixed. Because second path, you remember what is second path? Second path is line parallel to y axis from 1, 0 to 1, comma 2. That means here you see X is fixed. X is equal to 1. And Y is varying from 0 to 2. X is fixed, so DX is 0. DY, Y is changing from 0 to 2. So we will use that. So here y x is 1, so you put x equal to 1, it's a constant function now. And dx is 0, so this actually doesn't matter, this whole thing goes away. And in this dy is there, but x is 1, so 2 into 1 into y plus dx is 0, so this term will go away. This term is x is 1, so 1 minus 1 square minus y square, which is same as 1 minus y square. So uh, if you evaluate this, this is the usual real integral you do. I will not spend time on this, but anyway, I have written it down. I hope it is correct. Uh, you, you can check that. That's not a problem. After all, what you have to integrate? Minus 2y dy between 0 and 2. And here, 1 square minus y square between 0 and 2. So you, I return it here. You can check whether it is right or not. So together, the integral of z square over the whole of the path is integral of z square over c1 plus integral of z square over c2. First one we saw it was 1 by 3, second one we saw it was just now whatever this number is. Add them, you get the required answer. Uh, let me quickly go to, I have another 5 minutes. Let me quickly go to another example. So here I want to, first what I integrated was integral of z square over some particular path. Here I am trying to do a closed path integration of this function. Uh, function is mod z square dz over this path c. What is the c? c is the perimeter of the square with vertices 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1 and 0, 1. And all this problem is being read. You must imagine these points. You must look at the problem. You must 
be able to recall a picture for this problem. So I have a complex plane where the function mod z square is defined, and I have four points: zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, and zero, one. And I have a path which is the perimeter of the square. So it goes from zero, zero to one, zero, one, zero to one, 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 one to zero, one, and zero, one back to zero, zero. This is the perimeter of the square. So now I'll start somewhere. And integrate along this perimeter of the square, and I want to find its integral. So that's what I written here. Integral is evaluated by breaking up C into four parts. One is OP, P2, Q, R, P. That's what I told. From zero zero to one zero, one zero to one one, one one to zero one, and zero one to back to zero zero. Along each of these parts, the function which I want to integrate is mod z square, which is same as x square plus y square. And as usual, dz is equal to dx plus i dz. So let us check along each path. First, along path op. Op means uh, it's from zero zero to one zero, which means y is not changing. X is changing from zero to one. It varies, and y is not changing, so dy is zero. So substitute all this here. That's all. So this is integral is nothing but x is varying from zero to one. Mod z square is x square plus y square. Dz is dx plus i dy. Where dy is zero, so this term goes away, and y is zero, so this term goes away. So I'll have x square dx. Integrate that, you get one by two. So that's similarly, you want to integrate along pq. Uh, when you integrate along pq, that means from one zero to one one. Here x is one and dx is zero because x doesn't vary. X is fixed to be one, and y is varying from zero to one. So you substitute. These values in this expression. So x is one, and y is varying from zero to one, and dx is zero. So you get a purely complex number because you have dx is zero. So i times dy. You take i and integrate this with respect to y. You get four by three. Elementary integration, which I don't think I have made a mistake, but please check. And qr along qr means I want to go from One one two zero uh, one. So if I want to go from one one to zero one, understand y varies, x varies from one to zero, and y is constant. I'm on the top part of the square. So there, x is varying from one to zero, not zero to one. Remember, because my point where I start is one one, where x is one, and finally I end up with zero comma one, which means x is zero finally. Uh, and y is not varying at all, which means dy is zero. So substitute all and y equal to one because I am on that part on the top part of the square. So you substitute all these things in this expression, you get some purely real number. And the last part is like the first part where x here there y was zero, here x is zero and dx is zero. Y varies from one to zero. So you use the usual integration. You get minus i by two. Finally, if you want the contour integration of mod z square over the whole of the perimeter, you have to add all the four integrals. And I have done that here. I hope I have done it. Right. And uh, maybe this uh, example, do I have time for it? Two minutes. I'll just go through very quickly. If you want, we can explain this once more next time. So here, what I want to do is, I want to evaluate this function z bar dz over c. Straight line from minus i to i. So you have to, as I told, you must see the picture. They are not using the board, uh, but you must see the picture. That I have a plane. On that I have a function mod z, uh, not mod z, z bar, which is the conjugate of z. And then I have a straight line from minus i to i. So that means it's on y-axis. So first, let us do this first part. Afterwards, we we'll see the second part. So as usual. Z bar is x minus i by d z is equal to x plus d i by i d y and d x plus i d y and then this integration is nothing but this. Now you separate this out. So uh, okay, you don't need to separate. So if I want the straight, it will be straight line from minus i to i. Note that y is changing from minus i to minus one to one and x is not changing at all. X is d x is zero uh, and uh, d y of course it will be there. So d x is zero and uh, x is uh, 
zero. X is zero because it's on y axis. So this point is moved from minus i to i. So y varies from minus one to one. So all this here, on a straight line from minus i to i, x is zero, v x is zero, and y is zero.